Hello, I'm Chris Dungy, Assistant Professor and Counselor here at Delaware County Community College. On behalf of the Department of Safety and Security, I've been asked to share some important information with you. What you are about to view and hear will help you know how to respond to an emergency drill or true incident. We want to warn you that this information may be difficult to watch for some people. If you are unable to watch the videos, we urge you to contact the Department of Safety and Security, who will be able to provide additional training and an overview of this information. Let's start with how you will receive an alert notification. If you are in a classroom teaching, the alert to shelter in place or other emergency instructions will come through on your instructor station computer. If you're in an office, the alert will come through your computer as long as you're logged in. TVs and computer monitors throughout the college will also display the alert. Yellow beacons placed in common areas throughout the campus will display and sound an alert. To be prepared, we ask that you always ensure that the volume on your computer or speakers is raised to a recognizable level and never shut off a classroom computer when leaving the room. These computers turn on and shut off each day on their own. The following is how the alert will look in the case of a drill. This is a test of the DCCC emergency notification system for all college locations. No action is needed. In a real emergency, this message will contain important alert information. This is how the screen will look in the case of an actual incident. Please note both the audio and visual alerts. Emergency. Shelter in place or run, hide, fight. We hope launching the system for its true intended purpose will never occur, but to keep everyone prepared, we will launch the alert system in test mode several times per year during class times. This will not only keep you aware, but also help us to improve the system. This should not be considered an inconvenience, and in light of recent events, is needed now more than ever. You will receive a notification prior to any mass emergency system drill. Now let's watch the shelter in place video. William Shakespeare was born in 1564 and died in 1616. Shakespeare wrote 38 plays. There's some debate which was the earliest. The last play written in 1611 would have been The Tempest. Emergency, shelter in place or run, hide, fight. Okay, we're receiving an emergency notification. I need everybody to please remain calm and listen to my instructions. What's going on? There's an alert. We have to listen to Professor Smith and he'll tell us what to do. I need you to sit against the back wall so you can't be seen through the doorway. Sam, if you can help Julia to get there. Stay away from the windows. Everybody try to be quiet. Turn off your cell phones or silence them. I'm going to lock this door. Nobody unlock the door for any reason. Are we safe? Well, the college has put these safety procedures in place for our protection. Do the police know what's happening? Yes, the police are immediately notified in case of all emergencies happening at all college campuses and centers. I can't hear anything outside. What's going on? Well, we can't know at this moment. We don't even know if the emergency is happening on this campus. The college wants to make sure that everyone is safe, so when an emergency happens at any of the college campuses or centers, all of the college campuses and centers shelter in place at the same time. Do you think we should call the switchboard to see what's happening? No, the college does not want us to call the switchboard or security. The switchboard will be busy making other notifications. It's the same with security. They will be dealing with the emergency, so it's best to sit tight and be patient. This is a really big building. How will the police know where to find us? Well, college security and the police can communicate over the college's radio system. College security can tell the police exactly where the emergency is taking place and give them details about what is happening. Police also have floor plans of each building so that they can identify the location that security is relaying to them. Professor, I have a disability and I really can't sit on the floor. All right, sit tight, hold on. What's going on? The professor's getting a chair for Craig. Is that okay? Okay. Will I be able to go home after this is over? Listen, I know that going through something like this can be upsetting. If you feel the need to talk to somebody, the college will provide counseling, and they'll let us know when and where that's going to happen. So if you feel the need to go home, you'll be able to get counseling at a later time. I think I want to leave now. Listen, I can't stop you if you demand to leave, but I really recommend that you stay here in the room with us. I can't let you back into the room if you leave, and you'll be putting your own safety and ours in jeopardy if you leave the room. This is boring, just sitting here. What can I do? I feel like I'm wasting time. I'm sure everything is being done for our safety, so we just have to sit tight and be patient. What well, if I was in the cafeteria and we received an alarm? 
If you're in an open space like the cafeteria, you'd be notified of an emergency through the TV and computer monitors. Also, through the remote emergency notification beacons, those will light up, show text, and sound an alert. At that point, you want to seek shelter immediately. If you can't find shelter, you should run, but leave your belongings behind because they can slow you down. The best option if you're in an open space in an emergency is to run, hide, fight. This is the option that most colleges are recommending. How will we know when to leave? Well, the police will give us the all clear when the emergency is over. They'll do that by going from room to room to make sure that everyone is safe. So we just have to sit here and be patient. What you just saw depicted a simulated event. When you participate in a drill, you can act out the same situation you just saw or simply inform and walk your class through each step. Either way, you need to be prepared and so do your students. So approach it in the way that works best for you. And again, remember to review your surroundings. If you are in your office or another securable area when the drill is announced, check to see if there are any students or other individuals that can safely join you prior to locking your door. You should prepare for this during the drills. If the situation does not feel safe during an actual event, protect yourself. Never put yourself or someone else in harm's way. But if you are able to bring someone else to a safe location, you might save a life. Now let's review Run, Hide, Fight, which was mentioned by the instructor in the previous video as an alternative way to respond in the event of an active shooter or other type of intruder. Many colleges and companies have adopted this method, and while Run, Hide, Fight may sound harsh and seem alarming, it is an added measure to protect and prepare you in case of a real incident. Again, this video may be difficult to watch for some people. If you are unable to watch the video, we urge you to contact the Department of Safety and Security, who will be able to provide additional training and an overview of this information. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. Sometimes, bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide.
Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight. Act with aggression. Improvise weapons. Disarm him. And commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Thank you for taking the time to review these important safety procedures. The college takes your safety and the safety of the entire community seriously. Should you have any questions, please direct them to security at dccc.edu.